Hello everybody, it's Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, which is an online community designed to share clarinet knowledge to help you play clarinet more easily. Today, I want to give you some detailed information on how one way to do staccato tonguing better. And as a bonus of using this system, you're going to be able to tongue much faster. Now, some of the materials on this video I have posted before, but today I'm going to go into more extensive detail. And I'm also going to give you a worksheet that will accompany this. So if you look in the write-up, right below the video here, you'll see a link to the worksheet that goes along with this. And you should print that out or have it on your screen as you're going through here. There are a couple of really good techniques for playing staccato on clarinet. And today I'm going to focus on the stop tongue technique, which I find really useful for so many of my students and also for myself. And it's one that you can learn to get pretty fluent in within about two weeks. I don't know, some people, very few actually, but some people just seem to have this way of picking it up right away. You might be one of those lucky people. Most people understand the basics of it right away, but it takes a couple weeks to feel comfortable with it. So if you look at the worksheet, the very first exercise there has four steps, and I'm gonna quickly review those with you. We're gonna do this exercise on your open G, and the first part of it is we're simply going to play and hold an open G. And our focus for this is going to be to use fast, steady air, as we normally would when we're trying to get good tone on the clarinet. Fairly simple. The reason I start with that is I want you just to notice what your blowing muscles are doing. And this will help us prevent a very common bad habit that most of us do when we tongue which is that when we tongue, our body has this instinct for our air to huff into separate puffs of air. So if someone is playing simple tonguing, ta, 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 their air likes to go ta, ta, ta. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating it, but this is a habit we want to notice in our playing and learn how to correct. So step two is tonguing for quarter notes, and our tongue will start notes the way it usually does, right? Our tongue will gently hit the reed near the tip, and our air will be as smooth as it was in step one. Our tongue will interrupt the air, but we're still blowing. Pretty straightforward. Step three is where we deviate from regular tonguing and go into stop tonguing. And what we're going to do is give our tongue a chance to not only start the note by touching the reed, it's going to come back to the reed stop the vibration of the reed and end the note instantly. Now this is an exercise that's designed to help our tongue learn how to do it. For this exercise, we're going to keep blowing the whole time, even though our tongue will be off the reed half the time and sitting on the reed holding it shut for half the time. For this exercise, it's kind of like blowing with your mouth closed. If you did that for a long time, your head might explode. And please don't explode your head in this exercise. What you might find is air leaks out the side of your mouth. For this exercise, that's okay. So that's my disclaimer here. This is what your tongue will do. What we want to train it to do is end those notes instantly and cleanly. So this is an exaggerated exercise. I might even be making an attempt to swing my tongue in with some vigor. I'll demonstrate it and my hand here will show you what my tongue is doing inside my mouth. I do have air leaking out the sides of my mouth because I'm maintaining great air pressure. In real life, when we get to the finished product of stop tonguing and we're going really fast, the actual amount of time that our tongue is holding the reed closed is very small, but because we are blowing, we're increasing our air pressure, and when our tongue pops off the reed, there's really good air ready to zoom into the instrument. One of the most common problems that clarinetists, myself included, and probably you too, have is that sometimes when we tongue, notes don't speak as easily as they do when we slur, especially in the higher registers. That's usually because we've been letting our air down. So this exercise helps train us how to keep really good air support while we're tonguing. When you're trying this exercise at home, I really want you to pay attention to what the ends of your notes sound like. Your tongue's probably very good at starting notes with your tongue, but it might not be used to ending notes with your tongue. So sometimes you'll get Ta -lump, ta -ta -lump. So some of them are sloppy, some of them are clean. 
our goal is to train our tongue to get a good clean ending each, each, on each note as we go through there. Once that feels comfortable, then we go to step four, which is really the same thing, but as an exaggerated exercise. For step four, we're going to aim for the shortest possible pecky note that we can. We're gonna imagine there's a big rubber band gluing your tongue onto the mouthpiece, and when we lift it up, it just pops right back. We're blowing the whole time. Again, for this exaggerated exercise, we might get air leaking out the sides of our mouth. It's okay. This is what it will sound like. Now I realize this is not beautiful playing, but trust me, this really helps our tongue to learn a valuable skill. So I want you to try it. And I want you to try it regularly for about two weeks and just notice what happens to your ability to tongue faster. What I'm focusing on is shortness. The byproduct of shortness is that my tongue will learn to move really quickly because to be short, comes off the reed, zooms back super fast, and it learns to go very, very quickly. So that little warm-up exercise, the four steps I just explained, we can go through them relatively quickly. Then exercise two is a staccato scale exercise. What we're basically doing is taking an easy scale, and here I've written an F scale. You can take any scale you like or any set of notes that you like. But the way the exercise works is we play one pitch long and sustained. That helps us establish our tone and smooth air. And then we do four short 16th notes. And we're going to exaggerate the shortness. We're teaching our tongue. When we do the four short notes, we want to listen and make sure that the notes match each other. Most people fall into a pattern of some of them are short and some of them are long. And it's somewhat random. It might be that they go ta 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 and they make the fourth one long. Sometimes it's the first one. Sometimes it's the third one. I really recommend you record yourself because often we don't notice it while we're doing it live. So I'm not going to demonstrate the entire exercise here because you can do that at home. But I'll play the first bar or two so that you get a sense of how I might approach this exercise. So exercise two. Each time I play the long note, I'm reminding myself to keep my air moving steadily and quickly. Each time I play the four short notes, I'm reminding my tongue to end the notes with my tongue. That's the basic gist of this exercise. The higher we go, the more resistant the instrument will feel. It, it feels harder to make those notes come out. So I find what sometimes helps when I'm up higher is if my tongue doesn't hit the reed so hard. I want it to be crisp and quick, but a little bit lighter touch on the reed. So when I'm playing low F, it's got some force behind it. When I'm playing high F, it's a very, very delicate tongue. Take any note you want to and just get your tongue used to it. The most important thing is that our air keeps going. If we let our air down, you'll get an effect something like this. It starts to sound ta 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 heavy and the notes feel like they're not going to play. So that might be a cue to you to just monitor your airstream and make sure it's really blowing through there. Step three adds something new to my other videos and this is where you can have some fun. If you've ever been in a situation where your tongue and fingers get out of sync, so how do I describe that? I'll try and demonstrate it. Now that was a really awful demonstration because that's way worse than what usually happens, but it's what happens when our tongue and fingers get out of sync, where we move them and we're just not quite ready. I'm sure you've had it happen to a much lesser degree than what I just demonstrated. This is an exercise to help train your fingers to get a little bit ahead of your tongue. And when you first do this, it's going to feel really hard, unusual and unfamiliar, but I recommend you do it with a metronome. What I've written there is just a C scale. And again, I would recommend you try this technique on any difficult passage in, in your music where your tongue and fingers do get out of sync. I'll show you how to use it with this exercise, but you can use it for any piece of music that you have. What we're going to do is play the first note, which is our C. In that rest, which is the exact same length of the note, we're going to move our fingers into the next fingering. So it would look like this. I play C, I move to D. I play D, I move to E. 
So it'll be like tut, move, tut, move, tut, move, tut, move. The metronome might give you that halfway point so that we play, move, play, move, play, move. That's a good way of doing it. Everything else about this exercise applies as if we were on step four up above. It's an exaggerated short exercise. I'm blowing the whole time. So you should be able to see my fingers here as I do this. In fact, I'm going to um, give you a good view of my fingers. Now, I was exaggerating the movement of my fingers so that you could see them. You may know from my other videos that a really good habit is actually not to move our fingers much at all. So I was doing it for the purposes of this video so you could see me moving. But in real life, I would try and keep my fingers really close to the keys. That's the exercise. Inevitably, when we first start doing this exercise, our fingers will nicely move in the rest for the first two or three notes. And before you know it, they're back in sync with your tongue instead of moving in between. So if you want to, you can set your metronome very slowly at first and then speed it up. Great exercise though to train your fingers to move a little bit ahead of the other notes. And finally, let's take a look at exercise four, which is a little excerpt from the William Tell Overture that I'm sure you've heard before. And it's one of the fun exercises I know of to work on staccato tonguing because the faster we play this song, the more fun it is. So the way I would practice this, if I were you, I would start by doing it quite slowly and initially treat it as an exaggerated staccato exercise. So this may not sound very musical or expressive, but it gets my tongue thinking about playing really short. So as a working exercise, I might play it really choppy and ridiculously short. Again, I wouldn't perform like this. It's an exercise. <laughs> Now at the end there, I also added in the idea of moving my fingers between the notes. So at first I would just concentrate on my tongue and my air, and then perhaps when that felt good, I might add the idea of moving my fingers as I switch notes. Then I would just try and gradually build up speed, lightening my tongue a bit so it's not quite so exaggerated, and have some fun with this. Go at whatever speed you're comfortable at. What I found was that when I started focusing on shortness with my tonguing, it really did improve my tonguing speed so that my single tonguing, which is what we usually do as clarinetists, got much faster. And then I can have fun with something like this. And that's pretty easy to do when you train yourself using this extreme staccato. So have fun with it. If you've enjoyed this video and you're not already part of the Clarinet Mentors community, I invite you to join. It's really easy. You go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and when you sign up, you get a free newsletter every two weeks and each one contains a video just like today's, which was part of the Clarinet Mentors newsletter. You'll also get information on any other interesting clarinet seminars or webinars or information things that are all designed to help you play clarinet more easily. And if you comment below on this video, I answer all of the comments that I find there and I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.